I know your type. I know your type. My type are not clowns, you mean? Your type are like Abercrombie and Fitch models. Let's be That's real. That's not true. Clowns. You're looking for somebody to crush your head between their thighs and call you the F-slur. As far as you know, I said, welcome to Fruity Cereal. Okay, yeah, me too. Kevin, how are you doing this week? And don't say, ah, I'm good. Um, gotta be honest, had a little bit of an episode uh, yesterday, but you know what? I'm better now. Okay, everybody is still alive, breathing? Yes. All right, fantastic. Well, I don't know if everybody is. I mean, sure everybody that applies to I you. Mean, statistically, somebody has to be, you know, gone by now. We're getting a little too serious too soon. Sorry. Kevin, anyway, thank you for joining me once again. We're on what? Episode four now? Yep, it's episode four. Holy crap, we've done four Lucky episodes. We're doing four. four or unlucky four in certain cultures. You're being weird again. Let's cut to the chat. Oh, before we do, unofficial segment, mug of the day, as okay. usual. Mug of the day. Woo. I just got this one from Walgreens. I absolutely love it. And it's dishwasher safe. Oh, are, are all of your mugs not dishwasher safe? No, some of them are hand wash only, and I don't like them. Mm, yeah. I've become so jaded in my like adult life. I like if it can't go in the if it can't survive being put in the dishwasher, then I guess I don't own it. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, like my cups like is uh like these like movie theater cups like none of them are dishwasher safe. I bought one from uh, I bought a Ghostbusters one from Cinemark. I don't even really like Ghostbusters that much, but I bought it anyway. Um, you have a knack for buying movie theater souvenirs that you don't really care for. Well, I used to work at one, so they were, like, everywhere. It's so, so tempting to just get them. You, did, I can't remember. Did you or did you not? Did you get the $24 Doctor Strange popcorn bucket from yes, Multiverse? It's, it's over there in the corner of my room. It's folded and up. And what was that supposed to be? That wasn't the hex, was it? No, it was, like, I think it was supposed to be uh, the box um, from uh, from No Way Home. You know, the box where, like, if you press the button, everybody who was, like, from the other dimensions got, or no, sorry, other universes, not dimensions, universes. It's apparently, there's a difference. I don't know what it is. Don't ask me. Um, but, like, if you press the button, they all go back. But Spider-Man was like, no, don't press the button or else yeah. you all die. And I don't want them to die because I'm a good person. But wasn't that from the release of Multiverse of Madness? Yeah, it was for the, multi for the release of Multiverse of Madness. But it was very clearly... Or I don't know if I'd say clearly because it's all transparent and orange, like Doctor Strange's magic. So mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure, but either way, it's a it's a cool thing. Um, okay. I also got the uh, I also got the popcorn bucket, uh, the Thor hammer one. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing: I ordered it online, and it's not going to arrive until the fall. So oh my god, <laughs> yeah, Kevin, you got taken for a ride. I know, and I spent like fifty bucks on that thing, like in oh. total shipping. You've spent fifty dollars on plastic. I think it's tin, actually. It's tin. Oh, I think so. I think like the hammer part is tin. I'm not sure. I think so. Wait, you know what? I think you're right because I remember seeing this TikTok of a girl like trying to pick it up, and she ended up destroying it, like because she tried like picking up Mjolnir and it broke it. So I think it is. I. Hmm. It's not common that you see like movie theaters giving out stuff made out of metal so i was very surprised well regular popcorn buckets are tin regular collectible ones are are they okay well i mean yeah. that's your area of expertise yeah, like, not I have, mine. yeah i have um i have two from the last thor movie from ragnarok oh two why um because there were two different versions and i wanted both of them okay anyway yeah. anyway what uh, i was saying before about the ghostbusters thing the girl who was selling it to me at the concession stand, she told me it was dishwasher safe, so I put it in the dishwasher. And, uh, yeah, half of the paint on it, like, peeled off. She just wanted the sale. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Not for nothing, like, I don't think that they're making commission on how many popcorn bucks they sell. I think she was just feeling chaotic. <laughs> it's like, that's, I'm going to ruin this twink's day. Possible. That is entirely possible. 
<laughs> oh, God. Anyway, oh, no. Kevin, we have some news going on this week, do we not? Uh, yes, we do. All okay, right. so time for my segment. Sounds gay. I'm in. Boom, 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 boom. Stop trying to make a theme song happen. We, we will eventually. We, no, no, no. I'm going to stamp that out the minute it happens. No theme song. Well, I'm going to fight you on that. Just what happened this week, Kevin? Uh, okay, so first things first. Uh, Broad City star Ali, J- I'm sorry, Abby Jacobson and Jody Balfour are engaged. Oh, okay. Yeah. I did not know they were together. Okay. Yeah, neither did I. But they are. Love is in the. There is love in the outfield. Oh wait, are they both in? Hold on. Okay, so the Broad City star dated Bal. Started dating Balfour, known for her role in Apple TV's For All Mankind back in 2020. And they made the, oh my god, wait, so they've only been dating for like two years? It's not uncommon to get married after two years, like, I especially guess. in the realm of celebrity. I mean, yeah, oh yeah, well, yeah, they are celebrities, that's true. It's just that, it's just that, um, my sister didn't get married until like, after like five years of dating. Uh, that I would say that's a reasonable amount of time. Like yeah, that's it was like, like five years or six, somewhere around that time. I think five is like the perfect cutoff because at this point you should know, can I handle this person enough to make a lifetime commitment I to mean, them? They were already living together for years. Like, and that's, like, and before they moved out, like James was like practically, James is my brother-in-law, by the way, in case for listeners um like he was like he was like living at our house for like the longest time and then they moved out and then whatever anyway um so okay and they're okay. both in okay so i think that they're both in uh a league of our the uh the reboot of league of our own okay that's exciting i'm not necessarily a fan of that movie getting a reboot but it's it is what it is well i think that this is a well this is a series Oh, it's a si- Ooh, okay. I might actually be into that. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's a special focus on LGBTQ women on the team. Love that. Was that a segue or was that like a separate topic? Um, no, that was a separate topic. It's oh, okay. I mean, it's it, we're on the we're talking about the same thing because uh, let's see, because. Okay, well, it says here that they made their red carpet debut as a couple at the premiere of League on Prime last week. Okay. See, the new Prime series. I don't know if it says... I think that they're in it. I think so. I know that Abby Jacobson is in it. Abby Jacobson and... uh, What's uh, what's her name? Uh, Darcy... uh, Darcy Carden from from The Good Place, who plays Janet on The Good Place. I think she's in it, too. I never saw The Good Place. Oh... My roommate was trying to get me into it, and I just, like, the humor didn't, like, speak to me, so I abandoned it. Connor, it's such a good show. I know, it looks good, but it just didn't really vibe with me. It's so good, and it's so well thought out, too. So thoughtful, it makes you think. It's like, mm. That's the thing, I I have become, like, a strict absorber of, like, TV that doesn't make me think, it just tells me what to feel. <laughs> like, I just finished on, uh, what you call it? HBO Max, I just finished Our Flag Means Death, which, let's talk about, like, gay media right there. Holy shit, this show is so gay. I haven't gay. watched it yet. It is so gay, Kevin. It is so gay. Because it tricks you. I was thinking that this was going to be a show about pirates, which it is. But I'm thinking, like, stereotypical pirates of the Caribbean, bloodthirsty marauders. It's so And you gay, probably Kevin. thought that all the, like, gayness was just fans shipping characters that are, like, yes. not gay at all. You know, Cause it, it was, got- like, super hoolock all over again. Oh my god, because I got into the series very late and I'm seeing like all the people on Twitter being like, I ship so and so with so and so. And I'm like, oh, that's just fandom. But I was like, oh <laughs> developments. Anyway, I, I highly recommend you, that show. Yeah, now you know how I felt when I when I watched Camp Cretaceous. I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna have you hold a mirror up to me, Kevin. I don't like that. Um okay, sure. <laughs> what else happened this week? Uh Britney Spree. Brit- what the hell? Why can't I say Britney Spears? Someone <laughs> don't say that shit right when I got a mouthful of something to drink. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Britney Spears <laughs> collaborates with Elton John on new track Hold Me Closer. Oh, okay. That's exciting. This is is this like the first music she's done since her conservatorship ended? I think so. Let me see. Um because not for nothing, I see her on TikTok and she's posting, I, w- I don't follow her that closely. Like, 
I'm glad she, the conservatorship's yeah, over I and all that. This is the first piece of music that she's um, that she's creating ever that she's created ever since her conservatorship ended. That's really great. I love that yeah. for her. Yeah, it is good for her. Hmm. Okay, next piece of news. Solomon Bates of the San Francisco Giants comes out as gay. Oh, oh my godfather's not gonna like that. Uh-oh. <laughs> yep. Gay baseball. Oh my gosh. That's like what two weeks ago when we've had gay baseball as a topic? <laughs> that is, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Or maybe oh, wait, was before, I don't know. Before. I think it was might have been. I'm not focusing on the past, Kevin. I'm looking forward to the future. That's right. Okay. So, yeah. So, Solomon Bates of the minor league team. Um, oh, wait. Oh, sorry. No, wait. Oh, sorry. He started out as a pitcher on the minor league team. Richmond Flying Squirrel recently came out. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't read. Uh, okay. Whose time as a pitcher for the minor league team, Richmond Flying Squirrel, recently came to an end took to Instagram to speak openly about his sexuality and the importance of queer representation in sports. I love that because I'm very sick of people just coming out to be like, I'm gay, oh, give me attention. And Daddy posted a quote here. Um, I haven't been out as my complete self because I've been hiding myself. Yep. And he also says, being gay in this sport, you don't know what comes at you. Yeah, there's a very good chance that this might actually like end his career. Because <laughs> like... Like I, I I don't necessarily see the baseball community as a very like well, accepting also, one, but that's just me. Well, he also says, I thank the Giants for giving me the opportunity to be myself and go out there and play the game that I love the most. Okay, and he also says, I'm still going to open up doors for gay athletes like me. He said, We can't see this, we can't wait to see what he does next. Um, Bates, okay, and uh, Bates is the second minor league player to come out as gay. All right. That is very exciting. Congratulations. Yay. Welcome to the team. <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible. <laughs> I apologize for that one. <laughs> oh, my. All right, so last piece of news I have here is uh, HBO's We Are Here wins two Emmy Awards, one for Outstanding Costumes for Variety Nonfiction or Reality Programming, and one for outstanding makeup for a variety, nonfiction, or reality program. That sounds cool. What is this show? I've never heard of it. <laughs> uh, this show, okay, We're Here is a show where uh, three drag queens who have all been on RuPaul's Drag Race, um, let's see, it's Shangela, Bob the Drag Queen, and Eureka. Uh, they go from, like, town to town. They go to, like, all these, like, small towns and, like, help the, like, small... Okay, they travel across America and drag up small town USA along the way. This is just like a series version of Tu Wong Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Which, by the way, have you seen that movie? I haven't, I should. But it's like so like ingrained in like gay culture that like even if you haven't seen the movie, you've got the gist of it. Yeah, I know. It's a good movie though. I know. I know, okay. And, um... <laughs> Alright, so that's all I've got for my segment. Thank you very much, Kevin. That was quite informative. I'm not going to say the word entertaining because I don't want you to get a big head. Mm, but Connor, I have such a little body. I need a big head. What, so what? You can look like a Funko Pop? What the hell? Yeah, <laughs> that then makes maybe no sense. Want, yeah, Connor, then maybe someone will want me. Oh my god. Right, that was depressing. <laughs> that was very upsetting. I did not that like was. that. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Okay, anyway, uh, Kevin, I had a very important question for you. Um, you, as a spoiled rich kid, um, you have been to Walt Disney World, am I correct? Yes. Okay, do you like going to Walt Disney World? Yes. Now, have you ever done Walt Disney World during Halloween or Christmas time? Um, I have, well, not directly at that time. Like, I've been to Disney in September and january so like pretty much like around those holidays but like like i've been there when they've had the decorations up i have been to mickey's not so scary halloween ones i know i um, got you tickets for that <laughs> uh yeah you did oh yeah you did that was you yeah that thank you was me. <laughs> um, and uh i've been to the parks when they've still had their christmas decorations up even though it was not christmas anymore it was like mm -hmm. long after but they still had them all up and that was that was cute to see. Um, so, 
Yeah, why do you ask? I was waiting for you to finish your run-on sentence. It was very long. Um, I was asking because recently a friend of mine, just like uh, just for a little bit of context, we're in mid-August right now, okay? Disney has officially started doing Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween parties, like sporadically throughout the month, like a party a week maybe, maybe every two weeks. Now? Yes, now. Like they start early for the, I like, know. yeah, I know. And, uh, like, the decorations are already up. Like, you follow the theme park calendar. Halloween begins in August, okay? So mm -hmm. they finally started doing the Mickey's Not-So-Scary Party. And, you know, obviously with COVID happening in the last two years, they had to, like, scale some stuff back. Mm -hmm. But finally, Disney's starting to do, like, the full platter, so to speak. Like, they've got, like, the show in front of the castle, the fireworks, character meet and greets, yada, yada, so to speak. This year, like, I was... Playing around with a friend of mine, I'm going to uh, Disney or uh, Orlando in October, and we were playing around with the idea of let's go to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. I look at the tickets, and the prices have nearly doubled in the past like two years alone for like the exact same offerings that have happened like the past. Like it's there's they're not offering anything new. It's the same exact party that was in 2019 and 2018, and the prices have nearly doubled. It's like 176 dollars. For not even a full day in the park. This is just from 6 p.m. to midnight, or like I believe 1 a.m. And that's, I was just uh, that's that's that inflation. That's not even inflation. That's just greed at that point. Like, well, also, didn't like Disney get like cut off from like uh from like like special government needs because of like Ron DeSantis or something? Yeah, there was something uh that's a whole rabbit hole we could go down. I'm not nearly qualified enough to like touch on every subject, yeah, like but uh, Disney did that. lose its uh, tax status. They were um, grandfathered from the taxes. Okay. Yes. But here's the thing with the agreement with uh, like when Disney was the first established and they established that tax status, they had it written into the contract that if we ever lose our tax status, anything we owe will be like reimbursed by the state of Florida. So, like, the taxpayers are going to be seeing a very large, like, increase in the coming years. If this ever does go through, or if it does, I don't know. Again, I don't live in Florida anymore. Okay. But I was talking about, like, the Mickey's Not-So-Scary thing. Mm, what was your favorite thing about going to the Not-So-Scary Halloween party? Um, I don't know. I think... I, I really did like the parade that they had there. The parade was pretty fun. The Boo to You parade is maybe yeah. one of the best parades that Disney ever has. Uh, Disney World has done. I will say that. It's I like, also like how it's the one time of year that uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas is relevant at the parks. You stayed in line for an inordinate amount of time to meet Jack and Sally. We did. Oh, my God. That was... Was so, and Oh, my God. And that was actually when James was going to propose to Allison. I remember that. You were, like, all excited. Like, this is, like, probably, like... Yeah, the but then he didn't. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, you wait in line to meet a character for, like, three hours. You yeah, get I a quick love why. him and shove him, and why. then it's, like... Yeah. He ended up, like, proposing to her, like, on top of... I think we were staying at Baylight Tower. Like yeah, you stayed in the really ritzy one that year. Yeah, and, like, it was, like, during, like, one of the fireworks shows. I wasn't there, so I didn't see Could it. Could you so. freaking imagine, like, hey, it's me. <laughs> like, hey, will you marry me? By the way, your brother's watching this whole thing go down. Well, I mean, some people like to, like, record, like, proposals, which I think is kind of icky. Like, just record a recreation of it, if anything. I like that. Yeah, no, it's... <sighs> God, because like a dramatic I, reenactment, you know, like a documentary. I'm very much of the mindset that I can only speak for myself, obviously, but like I would think a personal moment like me being proposed to or me proposing to somebody, that's like an intimate private moment. Yeah. So like if and I found like, that somebody was know? recording it, especially like if I didn't know, like I get proposed to, I accept, and then they're like, Oh, we had the whole thing on video. I'm like, you have me ugly crying on video and you're gonna put it on the internet? No, I'm giving you your ring back. Although to be get Although to be fair, you know, Allison and James, they were they were dating for like three or six years. Sorry, five or six years. <laughs> okay. It's more than three. Oh my God. It was like five or six years. So like it's like they practically already are married. Like, I'm thinking know. at that point it's like not even a surprise anymore. It's just yeah. a matter of like when. Yeah. But then again. <laughs> so like, you know, it was very unlike. But like, oh my God, can you imagine how awkward that would be? Because he was like staying with us. He was staying with our family. So it's like <laughs> Look, I mean, that would be awkward if she said no, but, but she did. Your awkward, so. like, family relationship stories. 
I have a friend who has just recently moved to Texas. Um, she had a big kerfuffle with her ex-husband about like, like take, who's taking the kids, yada, yada, that whole drama. The shtick here was that her husband was staying in her mother's house rent free. Oh, and, yeah, oh yeah. You, you told me about this. We're, right. It was like, you, you don't want to have the names, right? No, we're not doing names. Okay. But no, like, no, okay, okay, no, yeah, no. It was no, but like, it's just like the ick factor is like, you're going to tell me I'm an unfit mother. And then also like live in my mom's house, not pay rent, like not provide for your kids. And then like, from what I last heard, like, this is the tea. What I last heard, he's still living with her mother. She has long moved to Texas. She's no longer in New York. That he's is living. wild that he's living with her mother. Like, it's one oh, thing yeah. to live with your own parents, but, yeah. like, to live with your ex's parents? like <laughs> Exactly. What? And here's the thing. Both of them are not, like, they're living in a house that has no electricity and no running water. Ew. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 oh, my God. It's gone from, like, pathetic to just sad, like... Anyway, that's another story. That's the little taste yeah. of the drama that goes on in my life. So, but uh, I was talking about theme parks, Kevin. Yeah, you were um, talking about the, uh, the not so scary Halloween party. Yes, but like in the broader sense of the uh, thing, Kevin, what is your favorite theme park in the world? Ooh. And you can't say Adventureland on Long Island. I actually, I don't have any memory of going to Adventureland. You probably, because you were a rich kid. You went to fucking Disney every summer. <laughs> but, like, I don't know why I didn't go to Adventureland, though, more, like, more often. Because every year there was another story about somebody getting injured or killed at Adventureland. Was and there? Was, I didn't yes, know. It was, and it was always on a specific ride. There was this one ride lot, I'll call it, that I believe to be cursed. One year it was, like, a spinning attraction and somebody's seat a uh, harness came loose. They got flung into the air and they landed on a car. Died. Then there was another one with like same is like uh, spinning swings or something like that. Somebody fell out and they got thrown from it. Died. And then there was another one. Like every year there was another thing. And my mom hated me going to Adventureland because she was terrified it was going to be me. Right. But <laughs> yeah, don't go to Adventureland on Long Island. They haven't had an issue in years, but I still think they're janky. Uh, yeah, I just I. I feel like I missed out though, because it's like I feel like I haven't been. I feel like the only time I've gone there was like when I was a really, really little kid, and like if I ever went at all, because I don't remember. I mean, fair enough, but like honestly, it's just a. It's more like, it's like a carnival that doesn't leave town. That's the best way I can describe it. Okay, but like carnivals can be fun. They can be fun, but like the shtick with a carnival is that because they're constantly traveling, the rides are like folded up into like briefcases because they're made out of tin and duct tape mm -hmm. so they're not stable they don't have safety they don't have the same safety regulations that like a theme park like walt disney world or universal has you know what i mean mm -hmm. but anyway i stole your answer what is your favorite theme park in the world kevin well i was still thinking about it um <laughs> Sorry. i don't know i can't help but say animal kingdom because that's where this little guy is from here's the thing i knew the answer but i just wanted our audience to feel like they were engaged yeah, that's where this little guy for, is from, Aladar. For context, what are you holding for those who are listening? This is Aladar the Iguanodon from the movie Dinosaur, but he's, well, actually, he's from the ride Dinosaur, which is based on the movie, but also the movie is kind of based on the ride. It's kind of, They have a weird relationship. There's a whole story about, you can watch the Disney theme park history video on that. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, right? Uh, they still live down in Florida, and they're, like, on top of all, the, like, the theme park tea and all that. Kevin, you've been to Universal Studios, correct? Yes. Okay. Are you familiar with the Simpsons, like, Springfield area that used to be yeah. Back to the Future? Mm -hmm. Apparently, because of the contracts with Disney, because Disney now owns Fox, they own the Simpsons, yep. all that jazz, yada, yada. Apparently, the Simpsons area is going to need to be demolished and, like, rethemed by 2027. Oh, well, that's a, that's a long time. It, it seems like a long time, but it's going to be here faster than you. In, in terms of, like, theme park years, that's so soon. Like, you know, you've seen how long it takes for a new ride to get built and, like, up and running. Yeah. Like, that Tron coaster at Walt Disney oh World. That has when been, the hell are they finishing that? That has been in development limbo for, like, what, three, four years now? And it was, it it was supposed like to launch, I think, in 2021. So, but that's, I don't know. Um, yeah, no, so... The Simpsons area is going to need to be completely rethemed, and people are already throwing out their theories. But the most common one I keep seeing, and I, 
I kind of love it. I kind of hate it. They're going to theme the area to Bob's Burgers. But doesn't but Disney owns them too? I know. That's why I'm thinking it's bullshit. But this is like across the board. Everybody is saying, oh, Universal's just going to do Bob's Burgers. I'm like, why would they pay the license for something they don't own when they could just keep it and like rework the contract or something? I have no idea why people are saying this. Like Disney but owns it is, them too. You know, Bob's Burgers is a Fox show as well, right? You don't need to tell me this. This is the people on Twitter I'm following. Oh my god. But anyway, yeah, Kevin, what, what would you, you like to see this? What? What do you think it's going to turn into? I honestly could not tell you. I'm thinking it would need to be something like cuz it made sense for me that the Simpsons area was near that like area that's on the water cuz uh-huh. it's like Springfield is like a mythical town. It's always like and it sort of encapsulated everything. I personally I I doubt this is going to happen. I would love to see them reinstall back to the future. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Pretty, that would be Cool, but also unlikely. Um, I mean, damn, I would say Fast and the Furious, but they already got a lame ride for that. They got apparently, a terrible. apparently, it's terrible. I have not been on it myself. Oh, God. Al- Allison says it's terrible. Allison is my sister, by the way, in case anyone forgot. Um, <laughs> we already like have named several members of your family. We got Grandma Dorothy, your sister Allison, your brother in law James. Uh, yep, and also. And don't forget Graggle. Gra- <laughs> don't fucking start with me. But uh, Kevin, what would you like to see the Simpsons area rethemed to at Universal Studios? Let me think. Because um, what I would absolutely love. What? I want a like a section of the park that's dedicated to the classic Universal monsters since they got rid of the Monsters Cafe. Ooh, that would be good. I Like I keep seeing videos on TikTok. Apparently like the Universal Monsters... They do like out and like roaming meet and not meet and greets, but like roaming character interactions in the park in the middle of summer, like nowhere near Halloween Horror Nights. But they're like, you see the bride and Frankenstein, you see Dracula just walking around. And I would love to see more of that because that is for me, that is like a big draw for see, Universal. Do you see like, that concept art of like of like a Universal Monsters like like ride where like it's like a drive through, but like your car goes like into the movie? Ooh, I would love that. That okay, sounds so you fun. haven't seen that. Yeah, it looked so good. It was like it's like you go through you go into the screen and like you go into the movie and it's like, you know, you go through like Dracula's castle and then the forest of the wolfman and you know Frankenstein's laboratory, all that jazz. You know why this isn't gonna work? Why? Disney is currently using that exact scenario in Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Well, it's not exactly. Well, it's very. You silly. literally go into the cartoon in order That's to like. That's true. That's but you go into it before. But you go into it during the pre-show. In this mm-hmm. ride, you're going into it in the ride. Like your ride is like a car that you're at a drive-in theater. Still, I feel like a lot of people are gonna make that compare. That's the inevitability of like theme park. Uh, fandom is like comparing one thing to another it's that's true a big old mess you got a point anyway um but i i mean i don't know i think it would be cool if like i don't know they turn the area into like something dreamworks related maybe like i don't think that's likely because they just got rid of shrek that ride being like a you know like a how to train your dragon ride maybe that would not be a bad idea i feel like that would like (laughs) take off so to speak like Sorry. you know, like in like the car could be like the back of a giant dragon that you're all riding. I mean, I'm I'm definitely I don't necessarily know how to train your dragon, but I could see that being a big success. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, we know, are I, gonna have to say goodbye to the Simpsons ride, which I am not super. Yeah. Or about. like, I don't know. Or maybe they could like, or like I don't know, they could do something with. Kung Fu Panda, because oh, there's going to be a fourth movie coming. They had just recently announced there's going to be a fourth Kung Fu Panda movie. Oh my god, why? I don't know, because I guess they were like, you know what, the first three were a success, let's do it again. Why the fuck not? Fair enough. My vote is still for something universal, like something that they own the copyright to, that they could just like splat up there and call well, it a day. They're going to get rid of the Simpsons, right, but they're not getting rid of uh, Marvel Superhero Island. Yeah, there's a weird, like, that's a totally different contract that I don't know enough about. But, uh, yeah, that one's going to keep on where it is. I mean, it's a little, it's going to be, it's an awkward scenario. But, honestly, I think it's for the best because I I really like Marvel Superhero Island. Like, I think it's kitschy but fun. I really like it. Yeah, it's like the costumes that they wear are pretty dated. But then again, you know, they have the X-Men. 
So yeah, exactly. Where else can you meet Wolverine? Yeah, you can't meet Wolverine at Avengers Campus because right. Wolverine's not in the Avengers. He's not in any of the MCU. That that land is all strictly like MCU based, except like there's like a little hints and like there's like a hints of like cameos of like some other Marvel characters that haven't been in the MCU yet. Like I think like on um, the Spider Man ride, there's like they show like a plaque full of like the other students of like the Web Academy, and one of them is Squirrel Girl, and another one of them is a. Uh, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Lunella, Lunella Lafette, I think that's her name. Moon Girl. Sure, that sounds like. I'm sorry, Connor. I know you don't really like, you don't really like superheroes unless you know. No, I'm just thinking like having a mental breakdown. No, the character name. Everybody in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that's like got a name that's very obvious what their superhero like Luna Lunette being Moon Girl. It sounds like she was named by J.K. Rowling. Let's be real. I, I, well, no, if her, if her name was named by J.K. Rowling, it would be something I can't say. It would be, like, vaguely offensive. <laughs> it would. Because she, because, I don't know, because in case you guys don't know, she is black, so. No! Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Anyway. I, I guess I should have given you that context. Sorry. Anyway, um, so, anyway... Anyway, speaking J.K. Rowling terrifies me. Speaking of people that terrify me, Kevin, I would like to introduce you to my hyperfixation of the week. That's about time. Kevin, we're getting dangerously close to spooky season, and I am already in, like, pre-Halloween jitters. I haven't Kevin, got a costume yet, but I have an idea for one. Do you have a costume? Are we going to no. wear costumes at Halloween Horror Nights? No, you can only, like, you, you can't wear costumes because they don't oh. want you to get confused for one of their performers okay but, but uh, you, are you are you gonna wear a costume on halloween at all probably not the most i'll probably do is i'll have my freddy krueger sweater on but anyway kevin please stop bogarting my segment okay thank you okay. uh kevin halloween spooky makes me think spooky scary whatever but does it also make you think sexy i mean fear can be yeah. sexy right yeah kind of kevin i have a series of photos I would like to show you, and I need you to do a smasher pass with me. Oh my gosh, I knew this was going to be terrifying. We're playing our first game on 3D Serial, Kevin. We are. Okay, smasher pass. Reluctantly, smasher pass. Kevin, I would like to show you my first photo. All right, let's do this. Okay. Smash. Smash, okay. Next one, please. Wait, who was that? Just answer, and then we'll... Mm, pass. Okay, and the last one, please. Pass. Really? One pass? Or two passes, one smash? Yeah, because I think I know who those other two guys were. Do you? Okay. Kevin, just for context, the photos that I showed you, the very first one that you said smash to, that was notorious serial killer Ted Bundy. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. I didn't know. And I thought that was Joe Goldberg at first. Joe Goldberg? No. It yeah, was, no, I thought that was, was Joe Goldberg from you. No, no, this was, like, no, it's not. No, this was notorious serial killer Ted Bundy, who admitted to the murder of over 30 women in the 1970s. He is known as the killer Casanova because he would lure women to his car with the attractive face, the polite demeanor, and all that jazz. Well, so you Kevin, didn't say what you would do. You didn't say you would have a smasher pass. You didn't I answer did. them. Kevin, I was asking you to smash your pass. That's what the point of this is. Don't okay, play but semantics like, with me. You didn't give your input, though. Because I know what these men have done. The second photo I showed you was the Cream City cannibal known as Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, who I knew that was. Yeah, I murdered, that. brutalized, yeah. and cannibalized a dozen young men and boys. And the third one was the Night Stalker known as Richard Ramirez. Again, prolific serial killer. Kevin, yeah. why do you think I asked you if you would smash or pass these men? Um, Because you wanted to see how superficial I am. I mean, we knew this, but um, no, Kevin, I have been thinking about this for an inordinate amount of time. I, like a lot of basic white women out there, love a good serial killer documentary. I mean, I know enough about these guys to give you like a quick glance over of their crimes, but... I want to talk about the people that take it a step further. Kevin, I was watching a documentary about Jeffrey Dahmer, and it was talking about his home city in Michigan. Apparently, 
like that's like what the city is known for. It's like we were the birthplace and like the site of Jeffrey Dahmer's crimes, yada yada. People are doing guided tours of locations that matter to Jeffrey Dahmer's crimes, his trial, his execution, all sorts of or not executions, uh, murder. Um, but then, like, I'm thinking these are people just like history buffs, right? They're going around town saying, like, oh, that's a location here. But then you see some people in the crowd that just feel a little different than everybody else. I'm seeing people with t-shirts and masks and whatever that say things like, I love Jeffrey Dahmer. Like, eat me out, Jeff Dahmer. <laughs> like, these people that are, like, attracted to these serial killers. And I wanted to talk about, like, why on earth are these people, like, finding out these horrific, horrific crimes? This man literally killed, assaulted, ate, literally, these people. And people are like, wow, I'm attracted to that. Kevin, where's the line between being a history buff and being a problem? I don't know, Connor. There's still some people who are simping for Army Hammer. That's enough. Okay, he's only an alleged cannibal, but that's another. Well, he's still an abuser, so, you know. He is still an abuser, so we don't stand, obviously. Yeah. But I'm just thinking, like, it was driving me absolutely nuts because, like, it's one thing to, like, find somebody attractive. To go out, like, out there and buy t-shirts and stuff and, like, come out with your fandom and be like, I find these people attractive and I want the world to know and not be afraid of, like, wow, I think this girl or this person might have something up with them if they are like sexually attracted to a convicted murderer or cannibal you know what i mean connor i learned six years ago that like half the country at least half the country is you know fucked in the head so like you know but this is like I'm like all the way back from like the days of the trial people were at ted bundy's trial with signs saying fuck me ted bundy like he's going like it's like they don't. Oh, I, I I I don't even know how to like phrase it. It's like it doesn't matter how new or how old the information is. These people exist, and I personally think they're a little fucked up. Like we're all allowed to find we're all allowed to find people attractive. That is perfectly fine. But I'm thinking like what's the like what's the limit with these people? Like some people I think do it only for shock value. They're like, oh, I find Ted Bundy That's true. hot. That's true. There probably are some people who are just doing it just for attention, just to be like, oh, look people. at me. I want to fuck Ted Bundy. Right. Don't you want to pay attention to me? Pay attention to me. I want to fuck Ted Bundy. But then there's people that take it to the next level. Somebody married Charles Manson, the murderer of Sharon Tate, responsible for, like, this massacre in her home. Mm -hmm. Somebody married that man during his final days in prison. They took his name, legally married to him. Like, and like, I just don't know where the line is anymore. <laughs> because, like, I think I have some problematic attractions. But then I see stuff like this, and I just feel so normal and well-adjusted and ready to take on whatever life throws at me. You know I, what just, I, mean? I don't even look at that because I just get too disturbed. I'm just like, oh, my God. That's... But that was, like, more or less in its entirety, my hyperfixation of the week. I was just completely blown away by like the attitude the behavior and the representation that some of these people are saying that like i know this person is pure evil incarnate but i would still like to smash but i kind of anyway, what are you gonna do okay well now i feel bad for saying smash at ted bundy because i thought that was joe goldberg that here's the thing again you are entitled to find people attractive but like are you still attracted to him now knowing who he is and what he has done no okay I would say that you get a pass. But Kevin. I yeah. would still smash Joel Goldberg because honestly, half at least half his victims, like they deserved it. Also, Joel, Joel Goldberg. Goldberg is a fictional character, so that's okay for me to say. Okay. You're still weird. Anyway. Oh my gosh. Kevin, I had something else to talk to you about. I have to look at my notes. Oh, you did? I did. We talked about The Simpsons. We talked yeah, about serial killers. Smash or pass? I thought you were gonna like show me like monsters and see if I was gonna smash or pass them. Like, no, show me, like Dracula, but... smash or pass. Frankenstein's monsters, smash or pass. The Wolfman, smash or pass. And then I would just say smash all of them. Well, it's definitely Dracula. That's remember. the height of comedy right there. No, that might come later on in the series, but uh, just for I today, I wanted to say. Pass. Obviously, it's smash. I had some other, here's the thing, the, the the photos that I chose of the suggested serial killer, those were some of the more, like, common uh, 
examples of like serial killers that people well, once find I attractive. saw them in the courtroom. Once I saw that photo of Jeffrey Dahmer in the courtroom, I knew something was up. I was like, oh. Yeah, man. that's why I was trying to find. There's very few photos of them like in a relaxed pose, so to speak. So I had to go with what Google offered me. <laughs> but good on you for catching on to that. I was like, wait a minute. Connor's not just showing me random hot guys. That was another thing I was going to say is like I had to pick like the, the quote unquote stereotypically attractive serial killers because I knew if I put John Wayne Gacy up there, you're going to be like, ew, he's old and chunky. No, I wasn't going to say that. I would say, ew, he's a clown. I'm not a clown fucker or a no, clown that's fucker. like I was going to put a photo of him like sans clown makeup. And Kevin, I know your type. I know your type. My type are not clowns, you mean? Your type are like Abercrombie and Fitch models. Let's be That's real. That's not true. Connor. You're looking for somebody to crush your head between their thighs and call you the F-slur. Yeah. So? What, what <laughs> happened there? I don't oh, know. Okay. It doesn't matter. Oh, my gosh. Connor, anyway. most men who are strong enough to crush, like, my head between my thighs, like, they don't have abs. I will say this on the record. Abs are overrated. Stan, I love that. Okay. All right. You know, big thighs are where it's at. Big leg day thighs. is king. Yes. Oh my gosh. That now I'm just thinking about men with beefy legs. What have you done to me? <laughs> uh -huh, I Uno reversed you. You Uno reversed. Oh my god. Stop with me. Oh my gosh. All right. So what what else did you have on your list? I wanted to talk some more about uh, what we learned about Miss Jeanette McCurdy last week. We were uh, oh, conversing yeah. about her book. The book has officially launched, correct? It has launched. That's true. I'm and so excited. I tried to get the book. I tried to get my hands on the book. Like day of launch. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what a fool's errand that was. I schlep all. I, I take my lunch break. Right. I leave my job. I have a 30 minute lunch break. I walk over to Barnes and Noble like a peasant. I go inside. I say. I, I'm glad my mom died, but Jeanette McCurdy, do you have it? They say, oh, they only sent us five copies, and they went out the door instantly. Only like, five? Only five copies, and I am incredulous, okay? So then they say, oh, we can, like, look in the system and see, like, where you can go pick it up. And I was like, sure, why not? They said, the nearest copy that we can call and hold for you is in New Jersey. For context, I live on Long Island. That's, like, a seven-hour car ride. Okay, well, it's okay. Seven hours is maybe a schlep, uh, yeah, like a stretch, but uh, New Jersey's not that far from Long Island. Yeah, I know, but it's still like with the traffic, it might have been seven hours. Yeah. Either way, I'm not driving more than like 30 minutes to pick up a book. No. <laughs> and you can't get it online either. No, I did. I, here's the thing. I pre-ordered it on Amazon, or I pre-ordered it. I uh, ordered it, and they said, we will ship it when the next batch arrives. And I believe it'll be here in, like, two days. So I really waited, like, no time. So so she's making money. And this was something else we were talking about. We are thinking that, realistically, she's going to make more than that hush money that was offered to her by Nickelodeon just from this book alone. And I really hope so. Which like the nerve of them to even offer her less than a million dollars for like- hundred percent. Yeah. Like, like not for nothing, they're like, th this is something that like media companies will have a handle on is like, we realize we've got a scandal going on. We want to quell it, but we want to spend as little money as possible. What's an amount of money that seems like a lot to a 16 year old girl? Yeah. 300,000. Well, I, well, wait, she was, no, she was like, wasn't she like 21 when she left Nickelodeon or when? Well, I when believe she like she, I honestly don't know. I haven't read the book yet. I got to find that out first. Yeah. I think, I think she was in her early twenties when, uh, when she was filming Sam and Cat. I mean, that sounds about right. I never watched that show. It seemed really stupid. I've seen a few episodes of it. It is it is pretty stupid. The only context for that show is like I saw like um like we were talking about with like the Schneiderverse with like the characters that appear in like other shows. Mm -hmm. I saw um Jerry Trainer's character of Crazy Steve, who was in Drake and Josh in Sam and Cat. So like they're continuing really? the Yes, he's playing his character. He's got his head like in a covering. So like they don't think that because he also played a character on iCarly. So if you saw his face, it would be very right, yeah, obviously like Spencer. Spencer on iCarly. Yes. So they're like, oh, we have to cover his face, but we still want it to be obvious that it's another character from a show. So it was like, it was cute, but 
I don't know. It was unnecessary. Like, I don't know. Do you think they play by like American horror story rules where there's just like multiple characters played by the same actor? There's just double casting all around. I'm not going to think that much into it because they're all canceled. <laughs> That's true. But like, oh, it says, oh, hold on. Padai says that she quit acting in 2017. Oh. oh, wow. That seems like fairly recent. I thought she quit yeah, earlier wait. than that. Oh, wait. That's right. She was also in, I think she was in the Fred movies too. The Fred. Oh, right. I forgot about those. Yeah. She did play somebody in those. Yeah. I think she was like, she was like, I think she was like the goth girl who was like his like friend turned love interest. Like, she like, wasn't Judy. Was she? Turned love interest. Like, because I know that was like a thing with like the uh, the Fred character that he was in love with this girl named Judy, but I don't think she oh, played yeah, Judy. She, wait, no, she wasn't playing Judy. She was like playing like the other girl. The other girl. The yeah, I think that's who she was playing. I think. Oh my goodness. I don't know. I never actually watched any of the Fred movies or anything. All I know is that all I know is that Flo from Progressive is in it for some reason. Like as her character of Flo. No, no, she plays it. <laughs> That would be funny if she was playing Flo. <laughs> She's just like, pitching you know, insurance to the like under fifteen target audience of Nickelodeon. Well, oh, I mean, kids gosh. probably know what the progressive commercials are. They probably see them all the time. I mean, I, well, actually, wait, yeah. how long ago were the progressive commercials on? For? They go way back. Like Flo is pretty old, mm. but uh, I remember was something... there was one where they they <laughs> there was one where. Uh, with Sonic in it, and it's like, why the hell does Sonic need car insurance? <laughs> I mean, Sonic Racers was a pretty popular series, right? That's true, but if you, I, I think if anything, Eggman would need insurance because of all of his machines that Sonic breaks. You know, it just reminded me, there was a TV show that I believe flopped. Um, it was about, uh, like, an insurance uh, firm that, like, provides insurance to a city that's, like, it's basically, like, Gotham or Metropolis, so they constantly have to like take these claims oh, no. and like Wait, wasn't this like a this was like a CW show, right? Yes, I forgot the name and of it. And it actually though. did like take place in the DC universe, right? Did it? I don't know. I think it did. It was called like what was it called? Like normal people or something, or like something like that. It was like average blokes or something. Powerless. Like that. that was what it is. Okay. But it was such a cute concept, and I really wish I watched it. It seemed like but then again, the joke is like done after one episode, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yeah, I never actually watched it. All I know is that Alan Tudyk was in the show and he played like a relative of Bruce Wayne. Like he played like okay. Bruce Wayne's like distant cousin or something. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, speaking oh. of Bruce Wayne, we've all you and I have both been watching the newest season of Harley Quinn on HBO. Yes, right? and I'm all caught up to it, and so are you. You saw the episode with uh Swamp Thing in it. Swamp Thing has a man bun. I mean, come okay. Am on. I the only one who thinks that Swamp Thing kind of looks like a yassified uh, Grinch? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you can't say that. That is incredible. A yassified Grinch. <laughs> he did. He looked like the Grinch, but like as a beefcake. No, oh, no. Oh my God, Kevin. <laughs> I get, oh my god, I don't even want to give you credit for that. That was just so bad. Oh okay, but am I the only one who thought he, lo he looks like the Grinch? <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Because he had, like, a very, like, tight uh, set of lips, so it almost looked like the Grinch, like, from the cartoon, the original mm -hmm. one. Yeah. So I get where you're coming from, but I hate you for that. <laughs> I a yossified Grinch, ew. I mean, they, I mean, they did kind of make him look kind of attractive, though. I think that was, like, the the joke obviously like he's this yeah, like horrific swamp like, monster be, like like a modern hippie like with a man bun like, he was, like yeah a... and he's like going to get like nine dollar beignets at a fucking food truck and it's like yeah yeah he's like i care about the environment but i'll still shell out like an inordinate amount of money that i make off my nfts yeah even though he's like he's supposed to be like literally like the living embodiment of like all plant life on the earth yeah Oh my goodness, a Yosified Grinch, Kevin. I did anyway, it was also pretty funny how like him and a Poison Ivy like used to be friends, but like they stopped being friends, not because Poison Ivy wanted to destroy mankind, but because he didn't care about her feelings. No, she didn't care about his feelings. She's a shitty friend. Like realistically, I would not want to be friends with Poison Ivy because like she's super goal oriented, which we love in a woman, but like she's not a good friend, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, anyway, the one thing I wanted to talk about is like a new set of characters that were introduced in the recent episode. This isn't a spoiler for anybody that wants to know, but uh, there's two new characters named Thomas and Martha, and uh, I'm a little okay. afraid for their uh, for their okay. future on the show. Okay, Connor, would you really call them characters? I mean, Bruce not Wayne held a. Just for a little bit of context, these are two cats that were adopted by Bruce Wayne in an attempt to woo his girlfriend, Selena Kyle. Yeah, she he tried did to not want them. To her. And uh, he named them after his dead parents, Thomas and Martha. And because he doesn't know what to do with them, he brings them home and dresses them up like his dead parents. It's very Jason from Friday the 13th mentality. And I'm like, oh God, those cats are going to die. They've got yeah. to die. Like, it has to come. He dressed up one of the cats in a set of pearls. Like, at some point, it's like Schrodinger's it's Schrodinger's gun. It's like Chekhov's gun. Once you see that string of pearls, it has to break apart and fall on the floor, right? Connor, did you ever see Teen, the Teen Titans Go movie? Yes, I know exactly the scene you're talking about. Oh, I cannot believe it. I, it has been three years since that movie came out, and I still can't believe. No, it's been four years. I'm sorry. Yeah. My my mistake four years since that movie came out and i still can't believe that the teen titans killed batman's parents and it was played off as a joke they are they are neutral enablers in getting his parents killed they did not pull the trigger on the gun they simply put the Connor pearls Raven on martha and shoved them in the crime gave alley martha the pearls yes no they knew it's okay so i don't know how I ended up on this side of YouTube, but I was like digging through like my DC fandom, whatever. And I found a compilation of every single time Thomas and Martha Wayne's murder has been portrayed in like media and film. And it was like, it was like 20 minutes long. <laughs> like Just like super drawn out sequences. And it always has the pearls. It always has that shot, that dramatic shot of the pearls flying everywhere, bouncing off the pavement. And it's like, it's a joke now to the point where they're referencing it in Teen Titans Go. I know. It's like, it's a joke. And yeah, they still put it in Joker. They still put it in Joker as a genuine scene. And I was yeah. like, and I was like, really? Many... It's like, really? It's like, it's like, I feel like that scene should have disqualified it from like winning, the, from being nominated for an Oscar. I was like, I was <laughs> like, okay, you know what? This was a good movie, but like, it's like, here's the thing about the, about Joker. I feel like Joker would be so much better if it had nothing to do with, like, Batman or DC Comics. That's a slippery slope to getting you Halle Berry's Catwoman. You know what? I, I know, but, like, the stuff that was references, it felt so forced. And, like, and then they had that scene in there. It was just, like, really? Like, because I mean... like, you've already seen them die, like, so many times. And it's, like, like, keep in mind, Joker came out after Teen Titans Go. Yeah. That was another, like... This was like a joke going around with like however many plethora of Spider-Man reboots there have been. People oh, were saying the like fact, the fact that we've seen Batman's parents die so many times, and yet people were I remember back when uh Marvel first announced that they were making a new Spider-Man before uh Spider-Man was in the MCU. They're like, okay, we're making a new Spider-Man for the MCU. I remember people were like, if I see Uncle Ben die one more time, I'm gonna kill him myself. And it's like, really? We've only seen him, we've only seen Uncle Ben die twice. We've you... seen Batman's parents die like a million times. You just took the words out of my mouth, and I did not like that. Oh, but, okay. I'm sorry. Is that what you were? Was that where you were going to go? Yeah, I mean, well, we'll never know now. Well, um, but uh, yes, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, no, like the amount of times that I don't need to see Batman's parents die for the 85th time. You know, it's over and done. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Uncle Ben, um. So allegedly, the le the plot of the new um, Madam Web movie was the sorry, not the plot. The cast list was leaked, and apparently Adam Scott is gonna play Uncle Ben in this movie. What? Yeah, Adam Scott, like from Parks and Rec and Severance, I think. Yeah, Severance. He's from Severance. Okay, yeah. who's gonna play Martha Wayne? Uh, Martha Wayne. Who's gonna play Aunt May? She was not announced, but um, it's gonna be Zendaya. <laughs> No, it's not Zendaya. It, she needs to get younger every iteration, otherwise the prophecy won't be fulfilled. No, it was um no, MA's ha casting has not been announced, but Mary Parker, um who's Spider-Man's mother, Peter Parker's mother, she was announced. And I don't remember who's playing her though. Hmm. When is this movie like scheduled to come out? I don't know. All right, cuz I mean, I'd be interested like just from what I'm hearing alone, I'm 
like already interested in it. Yeah, and I, I'm guessing this movie is going to take place like in the past, like probably before Peter Parker was born, because mm-hmm. everyone thought that because Dakota Johnson was set to star in the movie that like, oh, it's going to be about Julia Carpenter, the second Madam Web. But like, no, she's playing the first one. And uh, and Sydney Sweeney is playing Julia Carpenter. Oh, no, wait, not Sydney Sweeney. No, Sydney Sweeney is playing. Oh, who is Sydney Sweeney? Shit, I forgot. No, I think, no, it was Emma Roberts who's playing Julia Carpenter, I think. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> I'm Googling this. Ma- oh, okay. All right, all right. It was all right. So, uh, Pad Daddy, Pa Daddy says it was, it's Emma Roberts. Okay, Emma Roberts. Okay, I do like her as an actress. She's she's proven herself as like both comedic and like a serious actress. So, like, I loved her in uh, what was it? Screen four. Screen four. Yeah, and let me. Even see. though her twist was coming from a mile away. <laughs> No, Emma Roberts is playing Mary Parker. Hmm. I mean, okay. that's, what this, that's what this source says. I have a hard time, like, remembering. I knew Emma Roberts on Nickelodeon when she was in Unfabulous. Like, mm-hmm. do you remember that show? Yes. I only see her at that age. So, like, the concept of her getting older and, like, aging into parts. Like, I'm like, wow, they really hired, like, a 16-year-old to play Mary Parker or whatever. <laughs> Martha Parker, whatever her name was. Mary. Yeah, yeah. Emma Roberts is playing Mary Parker, and Sydney Sweetie is playing Julia Carpenter. Okay. Yeah, so I'm guessing this movie is gonna, which is upsetting to a lot of people because a lot of people wanted Sydney Sweetie to play Black Cat. Oh, that's I forgot Black Cat was a character. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Have we ever gotten a modern interpretation of uh, the Rhino? Uh there was the Paul Giamatti version in Amazing Spider-Man Two. Okay, with like a the, giant mech suit. Okay, because I remember I had uh, what was it like a PS One game? It was literally called Spider Man, and Rhino was like one of the first bosses you fight, and he terrified me, and I actually stopped playing the game. This was based on the comics, right? This wasn't based on any of the movies, right? Yeah, there were no movies at the time. There was like the TV okay. show, but like, yeah, it was based entirely on the comics and Stanley yeah. narrated. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Anyway, Kevin, we're getting kind of down to the wire. Is there anything else you wanted to mention before we have to say good night? Goodbye. Um, good morning. Um, not really. Nothing before we say good noon. All right. Well, Kevin, I before we sign off, I want to give you a little homework assignment. Oh boy. So I know. Oh wait, was I? Oh wait, I also didn't. I have the homework of finding out I, why <laughs> Katy Perry bought that covenant. Did you convent? And did you convent. find an answer? Um, no, but I'll just look it up really quickly right now. Oh my god, Kevin, I could have... You had seven days. I did. (laughs) Oh my god. Anyway, um, yeah, no, my, uh, just for a little bit of context, if you didn't hear last week's episode, we discussed Katy Perry's weird spending habits and the fact that she decided, I'm just gonna buy a convent with the trillions of dollars that I supposedly have, and, uh, yeah, I, I was asking... What was her reason for wanting this? And I told Kevin, like, provide me that answer by next week or I'll kill you. Well, guess I'm dead. Yep. Thank you. Um, um, but, okay. Uh, so apparently, I guess it was just for real estate purposes. It was just, oh, that's gross. It. That's even worse than like, oh, I want to turn. Oh, I hate real estate. Real estate is like the ultimate, like, slimy, like, stuff, especially if you're taking over a convent. Like, ew. I mean, theoretically, literally any place that you walk into could be turned into a house of worship. I mean, I've seen dead malls turned into churches. I've seen pizza huts turned into churches. So, like, these nuns don't have nowhere to go. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just one of the nice view, probably. Oh, pa- oh Pod Daddy says that apparently uh, she was re- two former residents rejected her as a potential buyer. Huh. Hmm. Anyway. So I guess she didn't buy it? But that nun still died. Yes, yeah, yeah, no, that's something we can't undo, unfortunately. Rest in peace. But uh, Kevin, the homework assignment I'm leaving you for this week. Kevin, have you ever seen the Saw movies? Actually, I've never actually seen any of them all the way through. Okay, but you know the context is like these people get put yeah, into like yeah, these no, traps. I know the context, one hundred percent. Well, but, not one hundred percent, but like I know enough. it. Like I know it. Like forty-eight percent. I'll say. I don't care how well you know it. Let me finish.
Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Kevin, uh, the context for the traps in the saw is like each trap is specifically catered to the person that's in the trap, right? Like uh -huh. a drug addict is going to have to dig through a barrel of like used syringes. Um, a, a potential abuser is probably going to get punched in the face a thousand times or something like that. Kevin, the homework assignment that I'm going to give for you for next week, I want you to design a saw trap specifically catered to me. To you? I want you, to me. I want you to put your serial killer evil genius brain on. I but want I you to create a, a saw trap. Evil genius brain. Find one and get it to work because okay. I'm going to be doing the same for you. And we will reveal our final designs by next week. Are you going to kill a bunch of dinosaurs in front of me? No, because they're already dead. That should be torture enough for you. Oh, yeah. Mm. Sorry. Anyway, Kevin, I think we said enough for today and we should probably say good night, right? Or good morning. Good noon. I said good noon. <laughs> good noon. That's not a term. Anyway, if you want to follow us on social media, you can do so at Fruity Cereal across all social medias at Fruity Cereal. Fruity like the fruit, cereal like the number. Kevin, where can we find you? You can find me at It's Kevin O'Lear. That's I T S K E V I N O L E A R on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Letterboxd. And you can follow and you can me. Find me on YouTube at Kevo Productions. I guess you don't want to follow me because Kevin wants to talk over me. Anyway, if you feel like following me, you can do so on Twitter at Connor F from LI or at Instagram at Connor K Fitz or on TikTok at Connor K Fitz 92. We hope you had a good time listening this week and we will see you next week when we reveal our uh, devious plans for one another a la the Saw Traps. And make sure to leave a like and comment and actually, why don't we... Oh, why don't we tell our list? Why don't we tell our listeners to comment what they think our saw traps would be? I would love to hear that. You guys have gotten a little familiar with us now. Let's hear what you think yeah. would be a fun little trap for one of us. But uh, we will be seeing you on all social medias, and we uh, you can follow Fruity Serial at the Empty the Bench Podcast Network on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe, hit the like, do all that stuff. So, all right, thank you very much for listening, guys. I'm gonna sign off for now and wish you a good morning. Good noon. Bye. Bye-bye, guys.